Hello everybody, Fiona Poultry here with you today and I'm going to show you what I've done with my latest stencils that I designed for Don and Downey's Artist Gang. I've got two stencils on the go here. I've got circles and I've got shapes and I'll be using both of them today on my gel plate. Yes, I'm a gel plate junkie. I just love making monotype printing with stencils. And so when I designed these stencils, I actually designed them with gel press, gel plate, gel, whatever you want to call it, monotype printing in mind. I have a very small selection of stencils that have a large enough design for my liking. Nine times out of 10, when I put a stencil onto a gel plate, I don't get the print that I'm after. Look at that one. Look how awesome the size of that print is. I'll just quickly talk you through what I've been doing here. I've put a bit of lime paint on my plate and then I put my stencil down and then I took my first print off. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding a bit of pink over the top. And you know, one of the questions I always get asked when I'm doing monotype printing is, how do you know what color to choose next? And to be honest, without getting too complicated, I've got two basic rules. I either stick with my monochromatic colors, which are those that are all sitting next to each other on the um, color wheel, or I go really, really groovy and I go with my complementaries, which are those that sit opposite each other. The only problem with that is you've got to make sure that they don't mix together because then you get mud. Now here I've done a bit of an ombre effect with this stencil with the paint underneath. I've popped my circle stencil over the top and look at that. So you don't just have to do a one color press, you can do two colors. The other thing you might have noticed is I haven't actually cleaned the right hand side of my plate. I'm waiting for those colors to dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put some more paint over the top and then I'm gonna pull the whole lot up. You'll see it happen in a minute. This is a gorgeous ruby color. What I've done here, and you've seen me, you probably don't see it because it's not on the film, but what I've been doing is I've actually been placing the negative of the stencil onto a scrap piece of paper. So I'm not just pulling prints off of the plate directly, but I'm also creating prints by using the leftover that's on the stencil. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of green again, and then over the top of this pink with a slight touch of green underneath, I'm going to put some turquoise. It's still a little bit wet, but I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> Now what's going to happen here, well, <laughs> what's going to happen in the bottom left hand corner is I'm going to make mud. Um, I'm trying to fix it, I pop the stencil over the top and I do one pull, here it goes. Yeah. I don't mind the pattern that I get, but seriously, we just need to clean this, mop it up, look at that. I love the design, but I don't like the colour. Anyway, so what I was going to say is what we're going to do here is because I've placed that up in the right hand corner where I've got um, the pink and the green and then I've put, popped the turquoise over the top, that's gonna reactivate the paint underneath. Being acrylic paint, it's water-based, it can be reactive. And so when I do a final pull off of this plate, all of this beautiful goodness is going to be pulled up. Well, that's the theory anyway. Let's see if it actually works. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing some block monotype printing. So I'm not printing on the whole piece of paper. I'm actually blocking off certain sections. I use lots of different pieces of paper. I've got some deli paper. I've got some old music sheet paper. So here you've seen me just put down some sewing tissue paper, which is an awesome, awesome paper to put on a gel surface. And now I've just put down a normal piece of paper. I've just got to wait a little bit, make sure I give it a good rub, and then I can pull it off. See how that all comes off in one big pull? I love this one. This is my favorite. The tissue paper just really soaks up all of the paint, along with this music paper. It's very, very porous. So that means that a lot of the paint comes off the plate. This is what I love about monotype printing you actually never quite know what you might get. Eventually, as you get a little bit more experienced with it, you can predict a little bit of what's gonna happen, but in all honesty, some days I'm still amazed. So here and now I've got both my stencils on the go. I've put down the circle stencil and I've popped some yellow paint over the top. Because my stencil is still wet, it's actually altered the color of the yellow paint and it's turned it into a beautiful cheddar cheese color. And now on the opposite side, I'm going to put the uh, lovely turquoise. People will often ask me what paint I use. My favorite to use on a gel surface is any type of heavy body paint. I have tried some more fluid paints in the past and I found that I just don't get the same results. I mean, look at that. That is the negative press off of that uh, stencil from the top left hand corner. This color here is just the most divine yellow. 
and I'm using it you can see the colors on the plate here are, are similar to monochromatic colors except for this pink this is where low quality paint really lets you down on a, on a gel surface there we go Dina's paint will work guaranteed there's a beautiful pink and what I did was I put down a lot of monochromatic colors and then I've just added one complementary color I didn't quite like the pink over the top so I've gone for a bit of turquoise down in that right hand corner now that's my whole plate covered I'm just going to do a couple of presses so I can take some of the excess paint off of the top because if I don't when I press I'm probably just going to get a big slab of paint whereas I actually want to get a little bit of pattern and texture. Now I start doing this process where I block print again, where I'm blocking off certain colors. Again, using the sewing tissue paper. I'm using all the same pieces that I've used before. I'm just building on them. Some of them I keep the same, some of them I tear. Often I don't know what I'm going to do with these pieces. What I'm doing is I'm seasoning my plate for one big piece. So when I mean seasoning my plate, what I'm doing is I'm just fluffing around, playing with some colors, getting into the groove, taking some paint off, leaving some paint on, and then seeing what I get. I use all of the same pieces over and over again because I like to layer my monotype printing. I think it just gives it a really cool dimension. Look at these, these colors. I mean, some of these are not spectacular, others are fantastic. I love the way that that green pops over the top of the pink. This one's my favorite. Look at that circle pattern come out. And look how much paint it pulls off the plate. So this is what I was talking about before. This is where I'm actually going for what I'm calling a major piece. So now that I've seasoned my plate and I've got lots of yummy bits left over, what I wanna do is I wanna do one background color and I've decided to go with a monochromatic blue here where I've got a, a night color and a sky color from Dina's uh, Wakely's paint collection. And I'm putting the two of them covering the whole plate and placing one large fresh piece of deli paper over the top. I let it wait for a while, burn it uh, quite a bit it takes a fair bit of soaking up and then I pull it from the corner and I take the whole piece off and what I'm getting here is one uh, I think my plate is an 8 by 12 10 by 12 maybe and I'm getting one piece of all the leftovers now you could just leave it like that it looks pretty impressive I reckon but what I want to do is I want to add some more dimension over the top so I decided that it needs to have some circles in orange don't ask me why that's just what I decided um, I didn't want the full pull like that that was going to be too much but what I did want was this leftover bit here so you see what I mean by after a while you start to work out how to manipulate your plate so you get what you want and there we go now I've added some circles and a bit more dimension to that background now I'll just come in again with some of my leftover paper and I'll just soak up whatever's left on this plate. I'm using the music note paper because it is very porous um, and I know that it's going to take up a lot of the excess paint. <clears throat> now one of the things I think we forget to use in our um, monotype printing is white paint. I love white accents. I mean I love black too but white is pretty spiffy. What I felt that all of these pieces needed was a little bit of additional uh, white in it, a little bit of a highlight. So I'm masking off um, and I mean while masking I'm getting a benefit but I'm masking off some of this plate um, so that I can get a large white piece in the middle of my my final piece now I forgot to mask off that left hand side but it doesn't matter because it's all part of the process and now what I'll do is I'm going to use this last little piece of paper that I've got see how much this is starting to build up this is looking really cool this one love it so I'm going to use the um, edges of it to soak up the rest of the white paint from around the outsides of the plate I mean I know I keep talking about my final piece but heck that's a pretty good piece in itself. I'll probably use that one in a journal page. I might tear it up and use it as collage paper, or I might just use it as one big piece to, um, to put on a scrapbook page and make my own pattern paper. Now, I just wanted to pull up the rest of this white, but I forgot that it was titanium white. <laughs> it takes an awful lot to pull it up. So all I got was a great big green blob, but that's okay, because I'll build on that later. The uh, titanium white's quite a heavy paint, and so when it sits on your plate, it's really hard to use the other colors to pull it up. You've got to let it soak in for quite some time. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing some mono block type printing here again where I'm blocking out certain colors and here's my last final piece again I keep calling it my final piece because I've got it in my head that this is going to be the beautiful piece I just wanted to add a little bit of color over the top 
and a bit more interest. And to be honest, at this point, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it, but I sit back and I look at it and then I go from there. I love all of the pieces that I've made. I seriously will use all of them in my work, whether it be in my art journaling or I'll often use them as collage pieces. Sometimes I might scan them and um, print them out so that I can use them collage over and over again. But it doesn't really matter whether you use it today, tomorrow or next year. You've got yourself your own beautiful pattern paper that you've created with your monotype printing. Now for my very last press, I just wanted to add a little bit of teal to this because it's a gorgeous colour and um, make sure that I balanced out a lot of these pieces. So here they are. One, two, three, love them. Four, that one I added a bit on top. Five, love this one, number six. Seven, this was my runoff piece. And then eight, which is what I'm calling my final piece. I just felt that it needed a little bit more, so I had some purple left over on my on my shape sensor, and there we go, perfect. So thank you guys. That's um, how I've used my Donna Downey Artist Gang stencils. Look at those beautiful coloured hands. Here's my display of everything left over. This is my setup. This is what it looks like. It's a mess. Uh, yep, there's my paint, and uh, there's my final piece. Thank you for joining me today. It's an awfully long video. I find that my monotype printing always goes for hours. You can pop over to Donna's website and have a look at all of the amazing stencils that our team have designed. There are stencils by Tanya Lee, who is another awesome Aussie designer, uh, Sylvia and Brian and Nika, Kristen and Denicia, and then of course, there's also Donna's new stencils. So keep an eye out for them. You'll absolutely love them. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. See you next time. Bye.